Europe. Upon looking at a map, you might ask yourself why is Europe considered its own continent, when it's clearly linked to both Asia and the Middle East? To answer this question we need to go back in time, many thousands of years back in time actually. At this time Europe wasn't Europe, and the people living here most certainly didn't call themselves European. Many different tribes lived in the area, some of whom were more successful than others. Most of the tribes could be categorized into larger families. The three larger families were the Slavs, the Valhas, and last but not least, the Germanics. Later, during the Bronze Age, the Europeans got access to more advanced tools and utilities. The life of a yet to become European became more prosperous. Some tribes grew even more powerful, and in southern Europe, countries started to form in ancient Greece. It was now that people started defining what would eventually become Europe. The ancient Greece divided the world that they know of into three parts. Europe, Asia and Africa. Of course, they didn't know much about the extent of these three landmasses, and the borders between them weren't really defined in any meaningful way. Eventually, the ancient Greece were put aside by the Roman Empire, which had a much more pragmatic approach to geography conquer it all. As the Roman Empire grew, so did Europe along with it. Unfortunately for the Romans, no empire seems to last forever. After the Romans, Europe eventually turned into the shithole that is the medieval age. Religion played an important role, so much so that European culture and Christianity became almost synonymous, and now Europe was defined as the Christian world. Simply put, if it was Christian, then it was Europe. The Catholic Church did everything it could to spread its religion, which in turn made it more powerful, and thus Europe grew yet again. Over time it developed and improved, gradually becoming richer and stronger. Soon, local kings started to compete with the Pope for power, and internal struggles between kingdoms were common. These struggles resulted in fast technological advances, which in turn made the kings even more powerful. At least some of them, not everyone can win. A war. As the kings grew more powerful, the church grew weaker. Soon a new era was born, the Renaissance. During the Renaissance, the borders of the European continent became more cultural. The European aristocracy thought itself superior to the people living outside of the continent, and the peasants living inside the continent too, of course. Now everyone and their mother wanted to prove that they had a Roman heritage, even in cases where this wasn't the case at all there still was no clear definition of what was Europe and what was not, but this would change as time went on. Soon, knowledge and logic would be valued more than anything else, and Europe entered the Enlightenment. A border was necessary, a continent without borders simply wouldn't do, seeing as that would be highly illogical and thus not go along very well with the ideals of the time. Many different people started defining the border, but the suggestion that won the most favor belonged to the Swedish officer Philip Johan von Stralenberg, who suggested that the European border should go along the Ural Mountains in Russia. His border suggestion is the one that is used today. With the history behind us, we wonder what will happen to Europe in the future. Of course Europe as a concept isn't set in stone. It is changing as we speak. The European Union, for example, has only existed for a few decennia and no one really knows what that will turn into. Perhaps Europe will be a single country in the future, or perhaps it all crumbles back into small states. It is impossible to tell, there is simply too many factors to take into account. What we do know is that the landmass that we know as Europe will remain for many years, but what this landmass is and which values the people living on it have is up to us, the people. We together create the history of tomorrow.